happen. Now yes. we are live. Now we are okay. live. So welcome to our conversation. Hey, I'll do that again. All right. Welcome to our conversation show live from Paradiso Integrale in Umbria, Italy. I'm Mark Davenport. I'm here with Heidi Hernlein. Heidi Hernlein. And mm -hmm. And we're continuing our weekly conversations with people who have experience, knowledge, and especially wisdom to share with the world. Uh, Heidi, can you take a moment to tell people how to comment as they're watching? Yeah, I Maybe hope you are on the wisdomfactory.net. And there, click on live streaming, and you will come to the event page. And there is a comment stream where you can put your comments in and please do because we will read it and ask our guests the questions you have yeah okay, okay. so we began this series last november which is called conscious aging yeah i was that's what's the next line oh yeah, okay okay it. okay, okay. <laughs> We have about 20 episodes almost every week, a couple times out here and there. And we have an amazing guest that you can check out at, Joan? The wisdomfactory.net. Yes. And our conscious aging. Yep. So we're starting today an encore series because we've been off that series for a few weeks doing other things with a special guest, David Stewart. And would you say hello, David? Hi, guys. Nice to meet you. Okay, thank you. We're very honored that, that you could be with us today. Absolutely. And, yeah, and yeah, you're quite well known in America, uh, but being in an older demographic and living in Italy, <clears throat> gotta confess that we learned about you only a short time ago. Quite unaware of the decades of photo work you'd already done for magazines and advertising. I guess mostly in New York and Los Angeles. Is that correct? Uh, yeah, and I, I did a couple of spells in Paris. I worked for um, a lot of the big fashion magazines there. Uh, and then um, a lot of my work is, is global, um, big advertising campaigns. Cool. Mm -hmm. okay. But fashion is not really my, uh, mm -hmm. as you might see, you know, or my... Uh, Makeup, not existing makeup. <laughs> so <laughs> that might be the reason why I didn't know you before. I, I shaved between my eyebrows. I um, yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. So well, anyway, I I just found out about you in uh, in your little article, six ways to improve your life after fifty. That was my first oh, yeah. notice of you, and uh, and then I went on to learn a little bit more about you and your online magazine, Ageist. Uh, mm -hmm. And I was really mesmerized by your photography and, you. and, and the wisdom of the, of the quotes of your over 50 subjects. That was really, uh -huh. oh, yes, we got to get hold of this guy. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. I'm happy you did. <laughs> yeah. And so I, at this point, I guess, uh, uh, is there anything you'd like uh, our audience to know about you before we actually start our chatting here, so to speak? Um. Yeah, so I, I, I'm, I'm 58. Um, I live in Los Angeles. I have a wife and a small chihuahua. Um, I lived in New York for a long time. Um, and uh, I've traveled quite a bit because of my job. Uh, and I've been doing Aegis now for um, two and a half, maybe close to three years. Ah. Like we did our Wisdom yeah. Factory. Yeah. So we seem to come into a, a certain age and then we begin to be interested about this age. So my first question for you, yeah, how, how did you mm -hmm. come interested in that? Only because you get well, older or something else? <laughs> well, I, I, yeah. Um, so, uh, you know, really, so I've been a, a kind of a, a high level commercial photographer for a long time, 35 years. And what I found was I keep getting older and the people I'm taking pictures of stay the same, which was <laughs> kind of weird, right? So, um, you know, what I find is in, in the media, there's this kind of uh, black hole uh, about people like us, like we kind of don't exist. Um, and as I started to investigate it a little more, 
I learned the reasons for that, and they're, they're real reasons for that. Uh, and then what the, uh, what the solutions are. Um, and then we started surfacing um, a lot of these people that were like us. And, you know, as we started this investigation, almost universally, what people will tell me, the, the interviews we do are, you know, an hour or two hours long. And always at the end, people tell me the exact same lines. I've done hundreds of these now. And they all say, but I'm kind of a weirdo. I'm, I'm unique. There's nobody else like me. And I have to just kind of like say, well, you may feel that way, but that's not really true. <laughs> There's like millions of people just like you. Um, so, I, you know, there's, and there are reasons for that feeling too. Um, so, we, so we started Aegis with the idea of illuminating this new way of aging that, you know, as, as you guys mentioned earlier, the, the way that it was for your parents um, just isn't, I mean, that just doesn't, I mean, it's kind of around, but not really. It's like not what people are doing now. Uh, mm -hmm. And they're just, the, the rest of the world, kind of the media world really hasn't caught up to that yet. So that's what we're about at Aegist is illuminating what we see is this leading edge of this new age of people. And I, I don't have a word for it. Somebody wants to give me a word for it. I'd love that. Um, <laughs> but I, I kind of, my, the parallel that I see is that there was no such thing as adolescence until the late 1800s. It didn't really exist. There were mm -hmm. adults and there were children, but there were no adolescents. And then sometime around, you know, the late 1800s, early 1900s, there was this new kind of life phase identified, adolescence. And then, you know, there's, uh, as you go into the, in the 50s, the teenager was invented. Teenager didn't exist before then. So now what we're, what we're happening is this, this period of life that, that we're all in is this new phase of life. And, and you know, as, as you guys were pointing out, if, if you're 70, you have, you have a reasonable expectation of living another 30 years. Mm -hmm. So that really is, this is like the first time in human history that that's true. So if you have that expectation, that's going to completely change your value system. So there's a lot of things, like if you think you're going to die in a year, um, and you really don't like who you're married to, it's like, whatever, you just suck it up, right? But <laughs> if you think you've got to deal with them with another 40 or 50 years, it's like, well, maybe we should do something about this. And those kind of value changes we see across people's behavior. Um, and it's, uh, it's, a, it's a fascinating thing that, um, you know, illuminating these things and seeing what, what really, what's causing these things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we should add a little bit. We are living here in the countryside in Italy, and there is pretty much still the old system. The people sure. with 50, mm -hmm. 55, 60, the men playing cards in the bar, and you know, they think they are about okay. to die. So, where you are, I think, is really important where you are in the world and yes. what contact you have with other people and what mindset you have. This Do you and, like and I, and, and I think that is really you, you, when the mindset is really the whole thing. That's, that's what's really changed, and that's what changes everything else. So, you know, as we, when we're younger, we're kind of, we're kind of all the same, right? Especially mm -hmm. now with, you know, with everybody's, everybody's got a phone, and, 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 you know, the way that popular culture moves so quickly, that young people are, and, and I, I love young people, I, I, I love them in my life, but they're kind of a monoculture. So they're kind of like all the same, right? And because they, and, and that's because their, um, their cultural influences are pretty much the same all through the States and Western Europe and increasingly China, it's kind of all the same thing. But as, as we get older, right, it's like we, we kind of split. So it splits on, you know, as you mentioned, geography and education, income, health, um, and as we split our, our view of how we see ourselves in the present world and how we see ourselves in the future changes dramatically. Mm -hmm. And so that's what, that becomes very interesting. So, you know, in, in, in my view from our, from our research, it's, I think the statistic is that if you're a 50 year old woman in America and you have a certain level of education and income, your life expectancy is 94. Yeah. Right. 
so and if you're if you're a man it's 89 and it, as you look at the the actuarial tables that ex expands so um, it's actually the longer you're alive the um, the longer you're expected to stay alive the averages move out um, so you know all of us we 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 know this and so now that I'm I'm 58, I have a reasonable expectation of living another 40 years. Yeah. So that's going to completely change how I I how I behave. You know what I do, and it and this is what I find is so different from 20 or 30 years ago that there there wasn't that expectation, and this changes it changes people's relationship to their work, to their families, to their 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 consumer habits, yeah. um, the, the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, you mentioned the monoculture of younger people. Yeah. <laughs> and it, it I, don't, I don't mean like, that as an insult. <laughs> no, no, it's just we, we take on this world we live in and we try to fit into it, you know? Right, mm -hmm. right, and right. That's it's just who we are. Right. Uh, and, and it's, you know, you talked earlier about people in at the end of the interview, we're always saying, well, I'm a really unique person, you know, <laughs> so to speak. But the fact is that the older we become, the more unique we become. Because we are going out in all these different directions. Absolutely. We're not under that social pressure, uh, unconscious social pressure mostly, to, to be like everybody else. And there was an... Uh, uh, a gerontologist, I recall, who said, well, if you've seen one 80-year-old, well, then you've seen one 80-year-old, <laughs> because right, we're all right, different right. in his experience. So this well, is really exciting, you know? We have a freedom that's just wonderful. Well, I, I think in, um, we do, uh, you know, additional to the, our online magazine, which is here, uh, we have this. We have our URL from the lovely island of San Tome, so it's a g e i dot s t. Yeah. Um, the in addition to our magazine, we do a lot of research. We do a lot of qualitative research, and and we kind of map out these um, interesting developmental phases that people go through. Mm -hmm. And what we find is sometime like in people's mid fifties or so, they have enough life experience where they're able to look back and they can make they can make a non-reactive rational decision about what's working and what's not and what we find is it takes a certain amount of being alive to be able to do that so you know when you're when you're very young this this stereotype and I think it's true you're either in alignment with your parents or you're in opposition to your parents it's very rare that there's someone who's like taking a third path out here that has nothing to do with their parents. I mean, I haven't met them yet. Um, and then, you know, you go to school and then you get on some kind of a career track. And then it's just like you're kind of on this like railroad track, right? You're just like forward, 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 forward. But then all of a sudden, like you start to think a little bit about what's working, what's not. And then, especially now, like if you're in your mid fifties, you're saying, wow, I've, I have a whole nother life ahead of me. I have a whole other lifespan ahead of me so I can make a, a non like now I can look back and I can be non-reactive I can just say like oh you know I really love what I'm doing this is great I'm gonna do twice as much of that or you know there's something in my life that's not working so let's just get rid of what's not working and do more of what's working and but I, but I think it takes a certain amount of time to, to get to that point. And it's, as, as I keep saying, there's this, there's this moment that we're in where this decision-making becomes amplified because you realize you've got a whole do-over in front of you. So then you, you can say, oh, gee, you know, I, 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 you know, I interviewed a woman, she's 82, she's uh, Cynthia Adler, amazing woman. And Cynthia is the mother of Jonathan Adler, who's a sort of famous in America. He has a lot of stores. Um, he's a, a bit of a television personality now. And so his, his mother went to law school at 58. 
<laughs> and at, I believe, 62, she's clerking for the Supreme Court in the state of Pennsylvania, at, and living in rural Pennsylvania. And then at 72, her husband dies, and she moves to the Upper West Side of Manhattan. And where she lives now, she's 82, and, uh, and which is all of these things I find remarkable. And when I speak to her, I say, so, so Cynthia, what are you doing on the Upper West Side of Manhattan? Like, what's going on with that? She's like, she says, I love it. I love the subways. You know, shock me with something. Show me something new. Like, get me out there. Uh, so we see, you know, these kinds of people, which, um, you, you know, 30 years ago, you would have said, uh, well, she did go to law school 30 years ago, but um, she was probably like a real anomaly then. But if you said to somebody, I want to start a new career in my late 50s or early 60s, they would be like, well, uh, but you're really, that's not going to work because of your lifespan. But th it's really not the case anymore. Yeah, and you are not supposed to do anything. I, uh, for a while, I did online dating, and I was about 57 or something. And uh, I got into contact with Italian people here. Yeah. Oh, Italians. Okay. And uh, I showed what I'm about to do. And so, what do you want in your age? Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, that comment reminds me of, um, it's like when you have like, uh, say you come upon an eight-year-old, and the eight-year-old is a piano prodigy, and they're amazing at the piano, and you say, wow, that's pretty good for an eight-year-old, but so what you're doing is you're diminishing their accomplishment Absolutely. by saying they're eight, right? Um, and, you know, we find the same thing here, like, uh, you know, like you're, if you wanted to start uh, online dating over 60, people would be like, wow, that's like pretty fisk frisky for somebody your age. Like, well, why are we, like, why does that even come into it, you know? Yeah, and why would you do what you like to do things, you know, like right. learning, studying and something, you know? Why would you? Because you have to retire, no? You have to sit at home and watch television or something like this. And then there's those these statements that say things like, and she's still driving. Imagine that, you know? <laughs> well, you know? yeah, I mean, that stuff drives me crazy. Yeah. Um, that yeah. just that just makes me bananas, um, yeah. and I uh, I'll try not to get too upset here. <laughs> oh no, it's okay. It'll make good video. Come on. <laughs> but I can. Yeah. Okay. You know, so a lot of this comes from I, the pharmaceutical industry has been very good to me. I've done a lot of advertising for them, but the thing is, if you're going to sell a pharmaceutical, you first need to sell a problem right? Yeah. Uh, you, you need to have a problem that has a solution, and then we'll provide you with a solution. So, so much of what we see out there is this um, medicalized view of people like us. Um, and it's true, it's absolutely true that people do develop medical problems, and, and we, are, we all will die from some kind of, you know, we're going to get hit by a truck or something's going to happen. We're going to have a medical problem. But to emphasize that that's really the defining feature of people our age um, makes me crazy. Um, you know, I, it just doesn't make sense to me. No, no. Uh, <laughs> I had more complaints 20 years ago than I do now. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I really right. Did. No. When no. I was in my 20s, I went to the doctors all the time, yeah. and now I, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> right well, on. Uh, <laughs> yeah, well, it's true. Well, I, I moved here from Florida where I was busy in my Medicaid program. Uh, and I came here with a, a little case full of medications that had been prescribed for me for all kinds of Stuff. very ordinary conditions. And when I got here, uh, she looked at that and she said, what do you need those for? And, and I had to really stop and think, do, do I need these? And, and basically, I stopped taking them all and don't need them. Uh, nothing's wrong. But in Florida, with that whole uh, gerontology program that uh, 
<laughs> the drug industries and, and uh, what collaborate with, I should say. Uh, anything that was treatable under Medicaid, they had a solution for. Let's put it that way. Uh, if you're a hammer, you're looking for a nail. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I have here a comment, and it's still about what we had uh, talked before. It's Lowell and Fulsang, and she says, totally agree that it's never too late to create a new career. I call it building a retirement career. On Facebook, someone suggested that the title was contradictory. <laughs> well, yeah, what's retirement? That's well, I mean, retirement is defined in the dictionary is to pull back. Right mm -hmm. is to like is to like pull everything back here to to retire into yourself, mm -hmm. and uh, you know I although I I think that as we get older we naturally become more self reflective, yeah. um, we're less influenced by what's going on around us, but the people that I talk to, it's ex they have, it's the opposite of it's the opposite of pulling in. They have strategies in place to go out. So they're, they're, they want, um, how do they stay connected to younger people? How do they stay connected to people through the entire age column? How do they stay connected to technology? How do they stay um, up on culture? Because it's, I find that um, it's not that important that I know the specifics of what's happening in popular culture. So I don't need to know, I don't know, need to know what, Kanye released last week, but I need to know that Kanye exists, right? <laughs> if I want to have a conversation with someone who's, you know, 20, 25 years old, I need to, I need to know about that or I can't interact with them. So mm -hmm. it's, it's exactly the opposite of the, it's the opposite of pulling in, it's, it's going out. Um, so I don't, I, I have a lot of problem with that word retirement I think it's um, I think it's appropriate for you know when we work in when we work in coal mines <laughs> it's appropriate <laughs> it's appropriate I don't want to work in a coal mine anymore I'm done I've got my five years of like being out of the coal mine and then I'm gonna die and we'll call it retirement and yeah, that makes sense but it's it's kind of um, it's less like that now yeah, I, I would say it's more like a change in, in focus. And retired, it sounds like being uh, tired. Yes. <laughs> you know? yeah. Yeah, yeah, but that, yeah, it doesn't mean that we are, maybe I'm tired from what I did before, you know, that's maybe, but we do something else. I, I, I mean, just to sum, we, the people that we speak to have a very strong visceral reaction to AARP. So that's the American Association of Retired People. Now, now I, I personally don't really have, I, I mean, we, we speak to them, we trade information. I don't really take a point of view on this, but I, I just report what other people tell me. And what other people tell me is um, they see AARP as like the grim reaper at the door, right? They, they associate it with a disease with like mm -hmm. a bad thing and I and I and I think that you know part of that is their is their branding is their image but I think also part of it is the word retirement yes so I mean the the model that we're I'm a little younger than you guys so <laughs> um, but the like the model that we see is rather than what was built up say in the late like Social Security was developed in 1932 33 something like that and so the idea was that you you would work till sixty five. Your life expectancy was seventy, and then you would die. So it was like a it was like a two event thing, right? You had work, um, mm -hmm. and then this this thing happened at sixty five, and then you had this second event happen. So it it was this very binary sort of thing, and what we're seeing now is that although that that still exists in in a lot of the world and a lot of industries, we're seeing much more of this people having multiple careers and multiple events. So something at 35, you change, you do this other thing. You know, maybe at 45, you do another thing. At 65, you do another thing. And there's this constant pivoting back and forth to, to find different, different roads of, of exploration. And it's not, um, it isn't this 
single event thing that's happening. And I, so for so many people that I speak to, the idea of retirement, it just, it's, it's almost unimaginable to them. And, and, and we're not talking people like in their 40s. I mean, we're talking people in their 60s and 70s who feel this yeah. way. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's a little difference between uh, Heidi and I, because I, was, I, I worked sort of by the hour almost all my life until I was, oh my God, 62, I can retire early, oh, it's so <laughs> wonderful. And then compared to what I was doing, it was wonderful. Right, For right. a while, you right. know, and, and it actually gave me the time to sit back and actually look around and see what right. I, I might like to do. Right. So I, I'm not complaining about it, but five right. years later, I was ready to do something different than sit around <laughs> in, in this Florida retirement village <laughs> where everybody was getting old and dying. You know? Well, that's, uh, I, Mark, you really, you, you, you brought up something really great there. And that if, if you want to, it's, it's something interesting to do, Google retirement plus death. And the quickest way to, you know, and I, and I think the reason for that is that we're, we human beings, we need purpose, right? Like when we don't have purpose, we mentally become completely untethered. We just, we're, we, we just do not handle that. So some people get their purpose from their families. Maybe they have like some, a, a driving passion. For a lot of people, it's about work. It's, mm -hmm. it's that having a sense of agency in the world, having a sense of utility, being able to contribute and get, you know, and you're getting money back. You're getting, people are saying like, hey, you did a good thing? Here, we're gonna pay you for that. So th there's this sense of feeling important, a part of something. And I think when that's, when you pull away purpose from people, um, it doesn't go well. It, 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 um, it, it, that's what the statistics show anyway. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, purpose from pull away. The question is how much purpose they had before or if it was just uh, dragging through, through a life, you know, which they didn't like. So I think purpose is, doesn't start with older age. It should start really, I mean, with the first <laughs> work you do. <laughs> right, as a young person. Yeah. Sure. Right. And this, yeah. What would you say for that? How would you explain to younger people that they need a purpose, which is not just making a lot of money, because this is sort of a yeah. mm, purpose, but, but you know the, what? It's, I think that that's, so, I mean, if we take the one extreme, um, someone who's just driven by making a lot of money. So, but that making a lot of money may be to support their family and put their kids through college and provide a, a home to contribute back to the community. So that might be, I mean, that might be a purpose. I, okay. I think that, um, I think it's very hard to tell someone they need, a, it's, it's either you, you, you kind of have that gene or you don't. <laughs> like, I don't quite know what I would, how I would approach someone um, and say that you need to find a purpose. I, I mean, I, I, I have encountered in some of the community work that I do, people who are kind of, they're having a tough time for whatever reason. And what I tell them is, uh, rather than have like purpose, like capital P, mm -hmm. I just say like, just be helpful today. Just find somebody to be helpful to. Just like open a door for somebody, you know, help yeah. somebody across the street. Just say hello to somebody. And then this kind of starts the, the, the thinking, right? Because yeah. the, if you're not, if you don't have that, my experience is you can feel kind of victimized by the whole mm -hmm. thing. And then once you kind of slowly get out a little bit, um, you can get to purpose capital P. And there's the ties neatly in the comment of Lorland. She said she would add meaning to the purpose thing. Oh and my God, yeah. 
Right. Yeah. Well, there's that, there's that wonderful book, Man's Search for Meaning. Oh, um, that's a great book. Yeah. Which is, which is I mean, it's like a, exactly. So it's yeah. a, I mean, it's a, it's a horrific story of this guy in a concentration camp, but it's really having, the, and meaning and purpose, I kind of, they're kind of like hand in hand for me. I, I would have trouble unraveling those two. That, mm -hmm. you know, and I, and I think like, what, what is it? And it, it can, it can be your family, it can be your friends, your community, your work, your passion, something, but you have to have some kind of meaning. And w without that, w we just go kind of bats. Like, you, you know, I, I personally, I, you know, people who, um, you know, they go, I don't want to disparage these people because people, people you, can, you can do whatever you want, whatever makes you happy. I'm good with it. <laughs> Me personally, like going to like a retirement community and playing golf every day, if that is the purpose and meaning in my life, well, um, maybe if I was completely obsessed with golf, maybe, but I'm not. So, <laughs> I don't know if that would really work for me. It would it's, work for a nephew of mine. Yes, but, right. Okay. Well, he should do that then. <laughs> it's, for me, it's like killing time. Yeah. I wanted to add, we are lately following Jordan Peterson, and he puts on YouTube his uh, university sessions. He's a psychology okay. professor. And it, it, the one which I recommend to people is Maps of Meaning. Maps. Ah. Maps of Meaning. Mm. It's really, really great. I, for me, it's like, you know, it's like, you know that already, but nobody has opening all these uh, <laughs> yeah. Right. nights. Yeah, it's yeah. really recommendable. About every 10 years, someone comes along and tells me what I've been thinking. But That's thinking wild. randomly, <laughs> let's say. Yeah. No? Really? And, and, uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. And then, what, what, but, what have you learned? What are you thinking, Mark? I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> well, <clears throat> I'll, I'll tell you what I learned 10 years ago. I'm much better at telling you that. Okay. And that was, of course, I met uh, Integral Philosophy with Ken Wilbur, and, uh, who works basically out of Boulder in Denver, uh, who, who just managed to reconstruct history for me in a way that I had never been able to see it before, and to see the co-development of individuals through their lifetimes and societies as uh, humanity progressed you know, from, from, right. from up through the ages. And, and, and realizing that, God, we've come a long way. Uh, and we're almost to a point where something really great can happen or something really terrible can happen. Uh, but it's, it's a whole way of looking at history, at human development, at my own development, on the world, the world's development, and 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 why we're so different in America and Europe than so much of the rest of the world, and it ain't their fault, and it's not our fault either. It's just the way things happen. Yeah, and it's about reality, mm -hmm. inner reality, and outer reality. Yeah. Yeah. Why the maps of meaning are more the psychological yeah. history, let's right. say, of mm -hmm. humanity, and this is the biological history. Also almost. biological. Yeah. yeah. Oh. So. You know, uh, I can add maybe this. My meaning in life is learning all these things. You know, oh, learning oh my God. new so, things. Yeah. So <laughs> um, this is something else that, um, you know, the, the, the people that we illuminate and um, at Aegis were really interested in this leading edge group of people. Um, mm -hmm. And one of the defining characteristics of everyone in the group is curiosity. Yeah. So it's very so, much what you were saying, Heidi. It's this, mm -hmm. I want to learn. I want to mm -hmm. do more. And in, in fact, I, I was in New York last week and I interviewed Anda Andre, who was, um, uh, she's a Romanian architect, 61. And Anda is essentially responsible for the modern boutique hotel. It didn't exist before Anda. Um, and her and Ian Schrager um, started a, a group of hotels in the late 80s that um, began that. So anyway, in my conversations with Anda, she says to me, you know, I can, you can blindfold me. I can make you, you give me the five parameters for your hotel and I can design you a hotel in 10 minutes 
blindfolded. Do it in my sleep. And I said, well, doesn't that get like a little like boring? And she says, yes, absolutely. I'm designing a city now. So that's harder. And I said, wow, that's like a big deal. And she says, well, the, the, the key is uh, whatever job you're in, don't understand 30% of it. So 30% of it is a total mystery, right? Which means you have to connect with new people, learn new stuff, and constantly elevate your game. And so in, in her world, the, the curiosity is kind of is, is built in. But, but we find that like the, the trait that runs through all of these people is exactly what you were saying, Heidi. It's about like if, 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 you, are, if you are an incurious human being, I do not understand you. I don't, I, I just, I don't, I don't know what to do with you, but all these then people, for the other person, <laughs> I, it's like, okay. Um, I mean, and there are, there are, I, I mean, I've met them and I don't, yeah. I, I just, I don't understand, but this idea of curiosity will, you see people who live really long times and they're fully engaged and it's, it's that, it's this driving of, I want to know, I want to discover, mm -hmm. show me something new, how can I keep going? Um, which, anyway, sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, that's wonderful. And I yeah. want to, to uh, enlarge on this a little bit. It's not only new things. You can be also curious about what is happening to you. So but instead yes. of being fearful, I, I re realized that in my life, oh. fearful of illnesses, mm -hmm. go there with, oh, now it's hurting there. Ah, and then it's developing like this. So, so you can find your life, uh, encounter your life with curiosity mm -hmm. by the uh, way Laurel Ann is uh, saying, <laughs> she is also continuously learning and it's really, Really well, <laughs> I think what, what you said, Heidi, is really is, is another kind of demarcation of this group that we've identified. So there's, there's the incurious, and they seem to have a sense of this, this grim acceptance of decay. And that, no, they the, know <laughs> everything. They know everything. And so there's yes. nothing new to learn, you and, know. And, and, and they're just going to kind of accept everything. Well, this is... Yeah. I'm horrible, the world's horrible, and it's just, I just gotta, maybe, we'll, maybe I'll, just, I'll die soon and it'll be over. <laughs> yep, and all this new stuff is making it worse. Oh, yeah. it hurts my head, all this new stuff, I can't yeah. learn it, like, no. I, um, you know, uh, I don't, you know, Steve Jobs would be about 60 today. So, you know, you look at the guys who run Google, you know, Sergey, like how old Sergey is probably in his early fifties now. People who um, uh, th this um, this idea that people who are older cannot that they're fixed, you know, that like we we can't learn new things. We mm -hmm. the the famous Mark Zuckerberg quote that, where he says young people are just smarter. Now. This is going to haunt him for the rest of his life. Because <laughs> he's getting older. <laughs> he's getting older. Right. I, and you'll be photographing younger subjects too, <laughs> so to speak. So, uh, you know, it's, um, I think that um, this is all a fallacy. And it's really a question of do you have the, the courage and the drive? to go into something you don't know, to just be, to, you know, to have a sense of like, I don't understand this, but not, not to say I can't understand it, to just say, I don't understand it today, but mm -hmm. tomorrow I'm going to understand it a little more, a little more, and then we're going to get there. Yep. And on a personal note, I'll say that I did that five years ago at age 70, when after knowing this woman online for a couple months, I came over to meet her and decided to stay. Ah, uh, coming out of retirement, Florida, to rural Italy. Fantastic. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So and, I would like to come back to Jordan Peterson, and he says it's a trait openness. No? Yes. Uh -huh. and Absolutely. This, yeah, mm -hmm. but this is not that you can easily change it. There seem to be people who have this more and the others have conscientiousness is the other one, not mm -hmm. conscientious. Well, I, and, yeah. So I, I think that the, 
the point of curiosity is tied up with this. Mm -hmm. So there's a, um, I think there's, I think it's William James said, uh, the greatest impediment to new knowledge is uh, contempt prior to investigation. I, I just butchered that statement, but it, it, it's something like the that. The meaning is clear. Yes. So, so, so this idea that um, I don't, I don't need to know, because I already know, yeah. right? So I'm not going to, I'm not going to investigate. I'm not going to be curious. I'm not going to see if this is a little different. Yes, it's like it's not that I'm against something new, but I already know how to do this. Yeah, you know? well, and I can make keep making it work forever. Some some time ago, they said yeah. we don't have to look through the um, telescope. telescope because <laughs> the Earth is flat. You know, we don't have to look and see if it's true. And there's all the time these things in yeah. science still happen. No, yeah. then right. they know right. everything. Yeah. It cannot be different. So. Not that I'm one of these people, but I want to put a plug in for the conscientious ones. Because uh, Mark Zuckerberg can make a fantastic new organization, but he's got to hire conscientious maintenance people to keep that machine running. Sure. You know, sure. they're needed. They're absolutely necessary. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so we need them both. Yeah, we need them both. And this is one of the things we learned with Jordan Peterson. Oh, right. yeah, Jordan. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that uh, personality. It has to do with your personality, which is you somehow come to earth. You can, uh, you can change a little mm -hmm. bit, but not completely. You yeah. cannot completely switch over. And my idea is the older you get, the more you can let go of the fixation let's say on your personality traits and you can learn a little bit from the other if you want to if you are really close yeah. if you can talk to them if yeah. you can talk yeah, yeah. and learn uh, new things yeah oh <sighs> hey we just talked a bunch we talked we, we, we should interview him instead we are talking what can we do about that? I don't know. He could ask us questions. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no, yeah. but I would be interested in, with this uh, magazine you have, Yes. what is the reaction on it? Mm -hmm. What feedback ah. do you get? What, what reception? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, do you get only positive, or do you get people who say, oh, that's all rubbish? So. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, I, I have a, a, a fanatical devotion. Uh, the people who write, uh, so the, the article that you read, um, the yeah. six things to do over 50, so yeah. that's at 125,000 reads on LinkedIn now. Um, and the comments I get back and the emails I get back from that, um, I you know, there are a few things I left out if I would do it again, I'd probably make it eight things rather than six. Um, <laughs> what are the yeah. other two? Well, the other two, I, I left out um, family, friends, community, which I think yeah. is critically important. And, mm -hmm. and also some idea of, um, uh, and I, I always I hesitate to step my foot into this, but some sort of um, spiritual relationship. Um, mm -hmm. with, with something. And that, and that can just be, you know, we find a lot of the people that we speak to, which really shocked me, they're, they meditate. Um, I had yeah. no idea how, like, popular that was. Um, some people have religious practices. Some people feel deeply connected to the earth, to nature. Um, but I think that that um, sense of being connected to something greater than us, I think, I think it's helpful. I think it's, I, I, I think it's nice. Um, and I, and I, it's hard. I don't really have the, uh, a good language to speak about that. And it, I know it, it, it kind of rattles some people the wrong way. So I, 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 I hope to learn to be able to speak about that better. <laughs> well, at your young age, you're at the right point. Yes. <laughs> oh, good. Good. I'm glad to know. <laughs> you learn more about this. <laughs> yeah. And it seems to be the spiritual thing is coming often with aging yeah. because you understand that you are not the, we would say, non plus ultra in yeah. Germany, the, yeah. the 
the, the big, uh, you, you cannot do everything you want to do. And there are certain limits. And then <laughs> it's a little humility, a little humility. Yeah. And you begin to understand that. How can I say that? There is something more than you. And even you are something more than the you, you know. Yes. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is not only nice for me, but it is amazing. <laughs> amazing. <laughs> well, I, I, I wanted to answer your question a little mm -hmm. because we, um, for the most part, and I want to say it's like 99.5% of the people who reach out to us um, feel that we have, I, it, um, they're no longer invisible, that we have surfaced, um, we have surfaced them. We've said, mm -hmm. we see you, this is what you're like. You may not have these traits that we're exposing. Um, you may not have all of them so vividly, but you have some of them and you probably aspire to the other ones. And people are incredibly grateful for that. And I, um, especially women, incredibly grateful for this. We, you know, once in a while we'll get somebody who, um, will get a comment, uh, and they'll say, well, but your people are all really cool. We're not. <laughs> uh -huh. and, and, and so my response to that is, um, well, I'm really skilled at making people look cool. That's, I'm like, I, I, that's what I, you know, I'm really good at that. Um, but also it's, if I'm talking to someone, pretty much most people, it's just a question of asking, asking them the right thing and being curious about them. And they're going to tell me something that's really interesting. And really, and 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 they are really cool. And I'll, I'll tell you a funny story. So, when we, um, when I started doing the pictures, right? So we, mm -hmm. the the visual voc, we we felt that we had to reinvent a visual vocabulary around people our age. That it was just entirely bankrupt. This whole like pharma, weird disempowered thing. So you know the thing that we hit on was um, the idea of self empowerment. That we are actually incredibly powerful, strong people. Um, yeah. and, and, you know, we really, we really are not, uh, we are not infirmed. I do not feel infirmed. So, you are young, no? <laughs> he has 20 years more than you. Well, well, I, I, and I hope to, to not be infirmed. <laughs> um, Don't worry, you won't be. No. Uh, it's, so, the, so the photography is necessary. It, we needed to make a statement with that. And we, so the people look very strong and the pictures are very strong. Mm -hmm. um, and in this day and age, people are so used to their iPhones and um, the pictures on their phones are kind of uh, their friends smiling with food. That's probably 80% of what's <laughs> <laughs> friends with food smiling, right? Which is fine. But, um, and, I, and what I found was when I would take people's pictures and I would show them to them and they would say, I don't look like that, that's not me. And I would say, well, actually, that is you. And you really are that strong and that powerful. And they would, there would be this like two or three month period where they would be like, oh, I don't know about this. After which they would, they would, they would be like, I want to use that picture. I want another one of those because this is really great. Mm -hmm. So now I, I, now I warn people and I say, okay, listen, this is what we're going to do. This is probably a different experience that you've had in the past. And the result of this is going to be a little different. Because they're, they're, we're, we're so, even though we're in this demographic where we feel really vital and vivid ourselves, there's a certain amount of messaging that's, that's coming in that says that we shouldn't be. We shouldn't wear certain clothes. We shouldn't look certain ways. We shouldn't really own our own power. Mm -hmm. And, you know, even, even myself, it, it, it took me a while to, to kind of get this. And that's, and that's and that's what we're bringing out. Like you, you really are strong, and you really are powerful, and you really have tremendous capacity. This is amazing. You are doing visual empowerment coaching. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely, absolutely. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. I've never thought about it. I, I do it, you know, with with talking with people and stuff. But that you can do it with mm -hmm. pictures. Yeah, sure, you can. Wonderful. It's an amazing experience. It's yeah. so the the whole. Um, one part of this that I was not prepared for in the least 
was the reaction that people would have on the other side, the ones that I'm talking to and photographing. So some of the people that we, that we work with, they're very famous and they're used to this kind of thing. Um, so it's less of a powerful experience for them, but it's still, like I did Marlo Thomas last week and Marlo's like, you know, she's like a big deal. She's a movie star, she's been around for a long time, she's an icon. Yeah. But even her, at the end of it, she was like, she's like, wow, this was like, this was really amazing. And, and it's because I'm, I'm really curious about you. What are you doing now? Where are you going forward? Tell me about yourself. Mm -hmm. And it goes in the face of this idea of invisibility, that, that um, with me, you're no longer invisible. I want to know about you. I really do. And I'm going to take this picture of you and I'm going to show you the way I see you. And I, I, again, at the end of the interviews, they not only do they think they're all unique, they're not. <laughs> I have to disappoint them with that. But they almost always say, oh, my God, this is an amazing experience. Mm -hmm. And you are I don't mean it to be. I just it's just informational for me. <laughs> Whatever it's comes to my yeah. mind, you're an archaeologist. In, in, in traits and in human yeah. parts, in parts of you. We have so many different parts, no? Mm -hmm. And you take out the ones which we don't know, mm -hmm. probably. Mm -hmm. well, it's really just, you know, I have no training as an anthropologist or a journalist. Um, it's just, I'm curious about certain parts. And, and, and so that's what I want to know about. You um, know, sometimes it's better if you don't have training because you, with your intuition, <laughs> and as an artist, you can see the things so much yeah, clearer yeah. than when they are all with theories mm -hmm. packed. Everywhere. Yeah, it's a good thing you didn't go to school for this, <laughs> that's for sure. Well, you know, so as, as a photographer, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a secret. So okay. there's a certain amount of technique that you learn and in technology, but really probably 80% of it is interpersonal relations. So if I'm set by a magazine to go, you know, like uh, I was sent to photograph by the, I did a cover for the New York Times Magazine, picture of Mike Tyson just after he bit off Evander Holyfield's ear. And so I admit I was a little scared meeting Mike and Mike, is a, <laughs> Mike was a scary guy, but it's really, what I have to do is within like seconds of meeting you, I have to get a sense of where you're at and what do you need to be comfortable. Like, where are you coming from? And just let me help you out with that. And, and I don't say that, but that's what I have to like get from you right away. And it's not that much different than like what we're doing now. Well, you know, you have done that with us. So where's our portrait? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I have to come to Italy. I don't know. <laughs> Come over oh, to no, Paradiso Integrale. Uh, yeah, we, so our, our photographs are not with food, but with cappuccino. cappuccino. Well, this is all, I love a cappuccino, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it's very, very, very interesting yeah. that uh, you do this work. Yeah. You are a psychologist in many ways, yeah? mm -hmm. or coach, or what you I can don't, say. I, I by don't practic, by, by, by pragmatism, how do you say, by practic? Well, I, 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 I don't mean to be. I mean, I, I, I don't. It's really just, for me, informational. I want to know about you, where you're at, what are you doing, why are you doing yeah. this thing you're doing. It's you, that's what, what a psycho, good psychotherapist does. He has I should an interest. You know, I have a great, <laughs> you've given me a business idea. I should charge people oh, yeah. for the interview. <laughs> 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 yeah, you should. Set it us, as an event, uh, uh, an adventure into this right. unknown mm. self. <laughs> <laughs> no, but but seriously, it, I find it very valid. Uh, yeah. um, why not? I, I mean, when you have this capacity, po, 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 yeah, really. Gosh, um, I, every every interview we do goes in its own direction, you know? And it's just wonderful to see how it unfolds. And then at some point, nearly always, there's this, whoa, we know this guy now, you know? Yeah. We've been talking to him, and he's not afraid to talk to us, and we're not afraid to talk to him. You can and only talk marvelous. about yourself. You, you say we. 
Oh, I, 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 speak, for, I speak for both of us, okay? <laughs> okay. All right. No, but it's, it's, it's really a magic thing yeah. that happens. Um, I don't. I won't say that uh, our art is interviewing, but in a sense it is, I guess. I must say I love it. Mm -hmm. And I love, as you say, you know, connect with people. Mm -hmm. This is really, yeah. Yeah. really, 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 I love it too. And I was invisible quite a bit. Also, I was a singer on the yeah. stage, but that is, that's not really you on the stage, you know, it's somebody right. else. But right. being yourself and becoming visible, this was a journey. And so... Yeah, and what we're doing, we've only been doing, what, two years plus? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, so this is brand new territory, it continues to be. Anyway, yeah. it's it's so amazing to have mm -hmm. learned with you a completely new way, I would say, of psychotherapy. <laughs> 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 and then, it, yeah. you know what the cool thing is with that, that afterwards there is this result of these wonderful pictures. You have some pictures, do you want to show them? Uh, let's see if Just I can do it. For the end, to see a little bit what we were talking about. Um, sure. So this is um, this is the the front of our site, um, and okay. uh, let's see if we can. Are you guys seeing all this? Yes. yes. Uh -huh. Okay. So we um, these are some of the people that we we speak to. Um, this is um, this is Cynthia, who I mentioned earlier, the Upper West Side, eighty two law degree. Wow. Uh -huh. um, yeah. And. You know, all these people, um, there, this, this woman, uh, Frances, um, took her, she looked at that picture and she freaked out. She was like, <laughs> oh my God, I don't look like that. It's like, I, I, I'm not that cool. And I was like, Frances, you are that cool. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Francis, you are. Uh -huh. And, um, you know, I would encourage people to sign up for our newsletter, which is really great. Um, and... Uh, we have people. Our audience is really global at this say point. Say again your 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 ad, uh, address. Your um, yes, your, it's uh, um, so we have this peculiar address uh, which we got from the lovely people in the island of San Tome, and it's a g e i dot s t. Um, there's no dot com in it. Um, uh -huh. mm -hmm. So uh, we're www dot a g e i dot s t, and we have this. Mm -hmm. Um, if you look down here, we, there's this uh, really great um, newsletter that we sent out that we'd love to have you. And we, we really invite, um, there's a lot of back and forth communication that goes with our people. Um, mm -hmm. Let me see if I can get out of screen share here. Uh, yeah, you're yeah. back. There we go. Okay. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> there's something I've been wanting to say the whole hour, and that is that Thank you for spelling ages the same way we do, <laughs> with an oh. E in the middle. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And, and you know, it's it's strange because usually uh, I have been using ages as a pejorative term, you know, like racist, like sexist. Yeah, yeah, so well. So, you know, thank you. We got, we got it, a positive. It, 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 so we, I, I just want, I'm going to give you a little ex why we did this too, because we okay. talked about it a lot, the name. Mm -hmm. So we really wanted to get to the heart of the matter here. And there's so much else out, so many other ways that one could articulate this, mm -hmm. but we thought, um, you know, we're a little punk rock. And so it's like, let's go right to what the, the center of the issue is. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and let's have that be our name. And it, it um, you know, it, it, it angered people initially they because they they associated it with um, like racist, but mm -hmm. um, you know there are other there's a positive way to look at it. So Certainly. there's the like in the New York Times there's the ethicist. So mm -hmm. he deals with ethics. So mm -hmm. we are the ages, and we deal with this sort of age thing. And um, ageism mm -hmm. is an element of it, but it's not something that we dwell on. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah, and that's wonderful because so far we had it only negative and yeah. now we have a positive view of age and ageists. And we are ageists too. Yes. <laughs> and, and, Welcome. And in, the, in the pejorative sense, that was quite an understanding. Oh, we are the ageists. We are the ones who've absorbed all this crappy yeah, information. good for your age. 
Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Doesn't he? I mean, he, does. he looks great. <laughs> <laughs> Handsome guy. You'd make a great photograph, by the way. Oh! Next time you come over, you yeah. you stay here for free and make a photograph. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> oh, by the way, we have uh, uh, thirteen guests staying with us right now. Oh and my gosh! We have this. We have this. It's kind of a B and B, but legally, it's not quite so. It is no. It yeah. is uh, association. As cultural association. Mm -hmm. yeah. In Google, we are uh, as a meeting point because they have so very little. Uh, Categories, yeah. yeah, meeting point, meeting so. point, yeah, and uh, and we're feeding them too, and so ah. we've been very busy this week. Nice, sure. yeah. Ah, okay, and in our age, we are still able to do that. Mm. Just so. barely, I tell you, man. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we are at the end of the hour, and I really thank must you so much. I enjoyed oh, it a lot great. to talk with you, and hopefully, we have another yeah. occasion. Thank you, David. It Absolutely. You oh, it was. I really enjoyed it. It was great. Great meeting with you yeah. both. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, and also thank you to all the live viewers and uh -huh. the new viewers who will watch the replay uh -huh. on YouTube, mm -hmm. and get into contact with David. Yeah. He has uh, given yes. You the, uh -huh. the, contact me. Sign up for my email. Um, the email, the agent email. We'd love to interact with you. Absolutely. Perfect. And also sign up in the wisdomfactory.net to get our newsletter about who will be the next guest. Okay. Yeah. Very nice. Bye-bye. So, Bye-bye. Okay.